Hey guys, this is Eric from Mindful Trader. This video is about the statistical processes I use to do my stock market research. So Mindful Trader uh, is a trade alert service that I run where every time I make a trade in my account, I send an alert to members of the service, letting them know the exact trade I made so that they can mimic me if they want uh, and trade it in their own accounts. Uh, the value in it is the research that I've done. So uh, through all the research I've done, I've identified these historical quantitative edges that put the odds in my favor when I trade. And so that's the value of it. So let me show you this research that I've done and show, kind of give you an idea of what I did. So with, um, with my research, uh, when I first started, I wanted to do it manually actually. I, I wanted to just dig into the raw data. So this is like several years ago and I bought data. I bought historical uh, stock market price data for all the you know major stock tickers and futures tickers. And this is an example of some of the data I bought. I found a vendor who sells it and I bought it and here it is. Um, and this is an example. It's broken down by minute here. So you can see, you know, there's there's a price uh, listed here for each minute and it shows this is from 1997. So this is more than 20 years ago, um, 1146 AM. It shows the opening price, the closing price for that minute, the high price of that minute, the low price of that minute. So it kind of gives you all the key price points that you need. And that's for one minute of data. And <laughs> I have this data. This is just for one ticker right here. And I have this going back 20 years. Look at all this data, just numbers, number, numbers. Every single minute from the last 20 plus years, I have the price data accounted for here. So for a researcher like me, that is awesome because it means that that the research can be robust. There's so much data and it's it's uh, all right here. It's great. So I did it manually uh, for a little bit more than a year. I, I manually researched this stuff and I did come up with a couple of trading strategies that were rock solid that I still use them today for Mindful Trader actually. And um, so that's that's great. I, I just ended up deciding I want to move to a software-based approach uh, for doing my data research um, because it would be way more efficient. I think though that doing that, that kind of grassroots level research was really healthy and good for me. Like for one, I spotted a lot of anomalies in the data and they helped me understand, I think they helped me understand, you know, how to interpret the results sometimes and how it could influence uh, research that I'm doing. I also, I also just because I was looking at this data tick by tick at the raw, you know, data level, I think it helped me somehow structure the way that I look, uh, at the, at the data and then I do my research. And so I think per, perhaps it, it gave me the structure mentally for how to approach, um, this sort of, uh, research and testing. So it was, it was a great period very laborious. So then I moved on to TradeStation. This is a software of choice for me for doing my research. And what TradeStation does is they allow you to use code to tap into that same data. So instead of me looking at the data manually, now TradeStation kind of keeps this uh, on tap for me and I don't have to look at these actual numbers anymore. I can just write code to access the same number, uh, same numbers and to, to run tests, any sort of tests that I want on that data. And so this, what I have open right here, this is an example of some code that I wrote for, um, for a trading strategy. Uh, so this is like saying, okay, I'm actually going to run a strategy where I buy if this, if this uh, price sequence or scenario happens and I sell if uh, this other thing happens. And this, this particular strategy is not one that is live in my portfolio anymore. Um, it's just one I kicked around at some point. Uh, and I think it's interesting for you to know this. So I've tested more than 5,000 different sets of code against historical data. I've done a lot of testing, man. I mean, I've tested lots and lots of different ideas. And the number of ideas that make it through to the finish line and are actually usable is very small. I have a couple of dozen at this point that are that are winners for me that I use for mindful trader to make my trades and that I alert. So out of 
5,000 plus back tests. Only a couple dozen made it. I mean, the huge majority of these, of these tests um, don't pan out. Um, so they either, you know, the results, they're, they're, they either come out as break even or losses or mild gains or something like that. So uh, I thought you might find that kind of interesting. So anyway, so you, so, so after I write code, and let me just say that's, this is a, another way to put this type of code, this type of a strategy is it's an algorithm. So I've, I've written very specific conditions for when an entry or an exit would be made. They're based on statistical criteria. This is an algorithm. And so that's, that's what all these pieces of code are that I've written. They're algorithms uh, that are intended to, to make trades based on various statistical criteria. So I now want to show you what that looks like on the, on the screen. So this is also TradeStation. And what, what TradeStation does is they will take an algorithm you write and they go back and you can take any ticker and say, if I took this algorithm and applied it against against this ticker, like I used this trading strategy for this ticker, starting way back in like the year 2000 and went forward 20 years, what would have been the outcome? And they show it to you in multiple ways. They show you the outcome in multiple ways. So one way is they can show you a p and I don't have that on the screen here, uh, but they can show you, you know, how much profit did you make by trade, by month, by year, overall, you know, any way you want to dice it up, they show you numerically what the profitability was. This is displaying uh, in a chart format, uh, what the results were. And you can see here that um, it's kind of a fun little depiction. You can see here's where trade would have been made. You can see how it's denoted here. And this first one would have ended up in a stop loss. It shows you, it's like a red dotted line and it shows the trade would have been fired according to my algorithm right here, and, but it would have ended up exiting there for a stop loss. Here's one, it would have entered and exited for a profit. And then you got one more here for a profit over here. And so I, I love working in TradeStation. It's just this beautiful kind of, to me, beautiful display of the code. It's like this, um, well, I can't think of how, how to articulate it, but it's like a thing of beauty to me. Uh, I just, I love how, how, how the numbers and how, how the data is reflected on the screen here. So now you have an idea of the tools I used. I want to make one more point though, uh, before this video is over. And that is, I want to find, uh, let's see, I want to find a market crash to show you. So let me, I'll go to the 2008 one. So you can see here, this is the market crash of 2008. There was a financial crisis. And uh, in, in October of 2008 is when things really started going crazy. Uh, as far as a downward price movement. And so you can see here, this I'm looking at the ES futures right now, which tie to the S&P 500. They were around 1,000, you know, right uh, as we were entering October, and then got down to 626, so more than a 35% drop in what is this, maybe 10 days or so? That's a big downward thrust. That's when, that's when some big, <laughs> some big bad things were happening price-wise in the market. And I think it's important for people to understand that when you look at trading strategies, uh, a huge element of it is looking at market conditions uh, because any given trading strategy is unlikely to perform well in all market conditions because let's say the trading strategy calls for you to buy stock uh, when certain criteria are met. Well, if you're buying in a, if you're buying in a market where the market is going like this, you're going to take a number of losses. And so it kind of, uh, it's really helpful to define market criteria and that's to do to define market conditions, I should say. And that's what I've done, uh, with my research and, and with these algorithms is within the algorithms, I define market criteria, market condition criteria that, um, that, that apply to that algorithm. So the algorithm fires only if certain market conditions are met. Um, and that's, to me, a key part of the whole process is, is ensuring that if the market does crash, that we don't go down with the ship, basically. And that's my way of accomplishing that, is 
if the market is showing characteristics of a bear market uh, based on how I've quantitatively defined it in my algorithm, then a lot of my buying strategies will stop firing or they'll fire less frequently. And so that's kind of, that's a built-in mechanism that I have that I spend a lot of time developing to ensure that kind of no matter what the market condition is, whether it's bull market, flat market, bear market, that we aren't exposed um, and that we, we, we're still able to be robust and lean on historical tendencies to make profits in those periods. I will say that during bear markets, there's a lot less profit opportunity. And part of the reason is there just aren't uh, enough repeatable patterns that are seen in bear markets. So it tends to be pretty light trading during bear markets and heavier trading in flat and bull markets. Uh, so I hope this gives you some like really helpful insight as to what it is I'm talking about when I say I've done this historical research and found these edges. This is what I'm talking about. This is the work I've been doing the last several years. And this is what you're paying for uh, if you get the alert service. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me anytime. It's eric, E-R-I-C, at mindfultrader.com. Thanks, guys.